wanted uh, to be the last speaker of this conference. Normally, this happens to be the very first lecture because it's a lecture in the name of the founder, Dr. Rachel Roy. And uh, this lecture has a special significance. It, it so happens that the original awardee, Sri Srikant Vaidya, the chairman of Indian Oil, could not make it. But at the same time, we cannot have a default. So I was requested yesterday to give a lecture. And I agreed it very happily because I can talk about polite or something. But today what I'm going to do, because I know this is the afternoon time, people have eaten very nicely during the lunch, so they may have some sort of siesta, they may go in a trance. And I will know from here who is going in a trance. <laughs> so I'm going to see that you don't go into the trance. So I'm going to entertain you, you will enjoy my lecture, and uh, and you can search later, you know, the, the, the things which I'm going to use here. So look at the title. God still is a chemical engineer. That means God was a chemical engineer. And we'll continue with today. And why did I use this title? Because I had said this several years ago when I was the president of Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers. In 2001, there was a problem. Because the government announced all these various courses related to, you know, uh, so-called, uh, you know, IT-related courses. Everybody, the students started leaving the main courses, including mechanical, civil, chemical. And I was a warden of the hostel, and some students came to me and he said, Sir, we are going to leave. About 17, 18 of them. I said, why? I don't think we are any scope in chemical engineering. We'll have scope in IT. So I took them to the mess, gave them nice like this uh, breakfast, and I said, I will tell you how chemical engineering is important. But it so happened that particular year, you know, because I was the president, I had to go to many places, and I went to Bhubaneswar, and there was a conference arranged by the local chemical industries, the associations, and you know what they did? They invited the chief secretary of Orissa government for that conference. And the chief sec I was since I was the president, I was the last speaker. Okay? So the chief secretary, in his over enthusiasm, said, I'm going to close all chemical industry. Bhuneshwar will be cyber issue. That's what he said. And the other conference was organized by Industries Association, Chemical Industries Association. Now I got up and I said, Mr. Secretary, I'm going to educate you. If you think that, I can tell you that we don't want any polluting industry, whether it is chemical or otherwise. But you say you don't want chemical industry. So I'm telling you that on your body, whatever is there is a producer of chemical industry. And if you don't want chemical industry, you would have to hide your modesty with leaves. Do you want to have it? And then I said this statement, God is a chemical engineer. I made this statement and very next day, the New Indian Express put a headline, this professor from UBCT called, says God is a chemical engineer. Now that became a catchy phrase. You can search it on Google and it is there. So I made God a chemical engineer, remember that. Mm -hmm. So our students in ICT who had a little low they printed t-shirts with God is a chemical engineer. Everybody is wearing that t-shirt and coming to ICT. When I went back, I said students were very happy that. So I said, wait a minute. God is a chemical engineer. I said it. Why? Because chemical engineering is the most versatile discipline. And chemical engineers can do anybody else's job, whether it is physicist, chemist, biologist, mathematician, name it. But other way around, it is not. And then I said, God is a chemical engineer, but chemical engineers are not gods. Otherwise, they will sit in the mandir and the wife has to worship everything. 
lighter load at saving. But now I will prove that why God, I call God as a chemical engineer. So if you do Google search, you will find some videos on me where I have said it is at least it is attributed to me in Google search. Okay. So so I when you told me yesterday, I said I must prove that God is still a chemical engineer. Therefore, the title. You got the background? The background is that. So why invoke God? You know, why invoke Why do we invoke God? Oh God help me. Now when there is one God or hundred gods, God means something supernatural power we want to invade. So maybe we say this. So to help at the time of difficulty. Right? So now the word is in the difficulty time. We are talking about nature, we are talking about sustainability, we are talking about decarbonization, name it. Can chemical engineers play a role of a god? And that is what I am going to tell you. So yes, so we have this peace, prosperity, luxury, and since God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, I am going to show how chemical engineering is like that. Okay, other engineers who are here, um, there is no disregard, but you want to migrate, change your religion, come to us. Welcome. Okay? So it is all inclusive, all accommodative. That is what the deity does, right? If you don't believe in God, call nature. Okay? I have no issue with that. So, so this, this is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. I have deliberately made that own capital. Now you should know why I made it. Being all powerful, pervasive, and being present all the time in the past, the present, and future, and chemical engineer will be always there. Chemical engineering will be always there. So those of you who want to change your discipline and become some markup IT guy, you don't do that. I will tell you how you can enjoy both of us. So it provides material and energy. And what are we doing? We as chemical engineers, we are doing that. We are involved in red processes. We are involved in waste minimization. We are involved in faster rates, minimum reactor volume, minimum process. So all these things are because of us. So it is home, right? That omnipotent and all those things, that is the reason I say. Now, so interesting part is chemical engineering is applied at all scales, from atom to atmosphere. Tell me any field where chemical engineers are not working. Atmospheric change. Nuclear energy gave maximum number of jobs to chemical engineers. Okay, nuclear. So look at this. Atmospheric, megascopic, mesoscopic, macroscopic, microscopic, nanoscopic. So this is a system engineering approach. That is, materials or energy come through a boundary and only useful energy and useful material will go out. Everything else has to be recycled and reused. And that is what we are talking about zero waste society. So how chemical engineering will help that? That's what I'm going to tell you. So look at this. You know, I don't know why this Dantakanti came there, but anyway, I have nothing to do with Dantakanti, but I'll tell you. CTS, RTS, 40 years. You know what is that? CTS, RTS, 40 years? Does anybody know what is, it should be a dialogue type lecture. Yes, Olympic model. Okay, this means that faster, higher, and stronger. That is the Olympic model. Okay, so so you look at any of these sports. Okay, any of the sports, everything is possible because of the different kind of materials where you don't have resistance when you go fast. Okay. The material technology has maximum number of chemical engineering applications. Just to change the material and everything else remains the same. So you see that new materials, nutraceuticals, functional foods, all those things, sometimes the athletes eat some, you know, some materials which you don't want them to do that, but that's a fact. So convergence, selectivity, rates, cost, energy, environment, everything is there in that. And that is what we do as chemical engineers. That is what we do. So, so look at the Olympic records. All these records are broken because of the kind of materials we provide to them. You have you seen the, the races, the athletes wear? Have you seen that? It cannot be but for contribution of chemical industry. And also this 
So this is what it is. You think of any equipment, anything, it is because of this fastest, the lightest material, for example, the bug density you have to change. You have to change the porosity. You have to change everything. You have to have non-perspiring attire so you can run faster. <coughs> because even a fraction of a second can make you be normal. So that is what was done by chemical engineering. So this is CTS, RTS, RTS, faster, higher, stronger. That is the model of you know, this Olympic movement. And it, is, it could not be possible but for contribution of chemical and online industry. So now this is another Poser for you. Can you show any three man made materials or products in this hall in front of you or anywhere you think of which is made without the use of chemicals? Okay? So you will see that there is nothing. If you could get that, name those three materials, you will get a prize of 100 million pounds which is waiting there since 2008. One British gentleman announced this prize. He says, Come and take this prize. So I also used to tell my friends in the industry, I will give 100 crore. I don't have 100 rupees of silver. Okay? But I used to say 100 crore because I know it is impossible to find. Not a single product, man made product, can be made without the use of chemicals. Now the processes should be eco friendly, pollution free. That is all part of our work, business, right? So now here the queen is there, queen is dead and gone. Now Charles has come over there, but the prize will remain there. Okay, now Charles will, Charles will go and William will come, right? Something like that is likely to happen. So anyway, so and remember, chemical industry is not optional. Because that secretary, Odisha government secretary made that statement because he did not know what he was talking. You know, this is this is sad. So we have to protect our industry. So, so this lecture, I said, God is a chemical on 17th February 2001, when I was the president, and this was the headline on 18th February 2001, okay, in the newspapers. And you can see that, then I also said, but chemical engineers are not gods, so that the housewives become a little relaxed, otherwise they will have no problem. <laughs> and so this is, it is there on the YouTube, okay, it is there on the YouTube. All right. So then also I gave a lecture later, home to Jinu. And I linked from life to death how chemical engineering has helped us in society. So, so then I know sometimes you don't know the job of chemical engineering. You might be studying chemical engineering, but what is the definition of chemical engineering? It is true that chemical engineers are compatible with chemistry because most of the time people think chemical engineering means chemistry. Chemical engineering is highly mathematical. Not many people know that. Unless you are strong in mathematics, you cannot do a research in chemical engineering. Okay, the term chemical engineering is not even intended to describe the type of work a chemical engineer does. So it is exclusive. The mechanical engineer you will think, electrical engineer, civil engineer you will think. But chemical engineering is a different kind of species. Okay, I call it a species, okay? And so, look at the scope of chemical engineering. It is an applied science. So we do applied work. It is not just, but we also do fundamental work. Okay? So physical, chemical, and biological rate processes. So remember, we deal with rates. We want to increase the rate. We, rate of mass transfer, rate of heat transfer, rate of momentum transfer. We want to reduce the volume. We want to reduce the reactor volume. Reduce, that is what chemical engineers do. So this is where, so it, its applications are going to be helpful in protecting the planet with the principle of sustainable development. Like Almighty God is doing it, chemical engineers have taken upon themselves to protect the planet and we should do that. Okay? And so see that chemical engineering deals with analysis of rate processes, I mentioned, analysis of systems and system boundaries, deals with space and time, Okay, and therefore, the, it is applied from atom to atmosphere. Anything you want. And in fact, you saw the other day that Professor Ganpati Ayyappa gave a very beautiful lecture related to biological species, right? And that is, he's a chemical engineer. So, material and energy with reference to the system. So, <clears throat> so chemical engineering therefore enjoys a special phase in our life, in our society, in our economy. And 
people should know this and you are supposed to propagate this message what I'm telling you we are accommodative so I, I was in UK you know Lubbar University as a liver in fellow the head of chemical engineering was a chemist and the head of chemistry was a chemical engineer at the same time I'm telling you that in 1980-81 and so very versatile chemical engineer and a place in the world of atoms to atmosphere and molecules <coughs> So the question is that is there any charm left in chemical engineering or should you should leave it and go somewhere and become IT engineer? Right? Something like that. In fact, this is one of the biggest problems we are facing in this country. We are talking about creating five trillion dollar economy, right? Then we say we'll go to nine trillion dollar, then we say we'll go to twenty-seven trillion dollar, then we say thirty trillion dollar. Can it be done without manufacturing? Manufacturing is a very important role. Service sector you can add 70 percent, but manufacturing 24 to 25 percent. So chemical engineering, if you don't manufacture, you cannot add to the economy. So this is very important. So so then you know why should students join chemical engineering? So I will tell you very interesting story about this also little later. So there are five main cycles in life. Okay, we know nitrogen cycle, nitrogen fixation in soil, like carbon fixation in soil, then we have water, carbon, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now, those of you who understand chemistry, have you heard thiochemistry, the word thiochemistry, where sulfur is there? Life began because of sulfur. Thio is a Latin word. That has come from Sanskrit word, Devas. Devas becomes Thai. Sometimes South Indian fellows write T H and D same, right? Vishwanathan or Vishwanathan, you know, right? You know that. The origin is that. That is, it is Devas. That is, sulfur is a god. If there was no sulfur, there would not have been life. But these cycles are very important. And because we have disturbed these cycles, we are having problems. Okay, whether it is carbon cycle, it is water cycle, you know, all those cycles. So, we look at this. so these are the so-called 17 sustainable development goals. Okay, look at this. Environment, everybody understands. Climate change, water ecosystem, land ecosystem, how chemical engineering will help in restoration of that. In between, your energy system, industry and infrastructure on this side, poverty and hunger. We have to have you know, more food from less than or tillable land has gone down. So we require fertilizers. Okay, we require all these things. We require pesticides to kill the pests. But we don't want to kill the human beings, but only the pests. So this is, you know, very, very important thing. This is where artificial intelligence, ML and all those things will come to our rescue. Okay, so listen, this is what the sustainable material is in one and all these different you know, uh, the goals, like goal 7, 11, 6, 1, 12, they are all shown in these materials. Okay, and we have all these things in this. And at the same time, carbon free renewable energy. I said yesterday in my lecture, we require energy mix, but no carbon in energy. Which is against the policy of the government. Yes, for some time you may have bioethanol or whatever. But in the long run, carbon should not be a part of energy mix because that is what is emitting carbon dioxide and we have to bring down the carbon dioxide concentration. This is where once again, you know, chemical engineering will, will help. This is the World Meteorological Organization. You heard many stories about this. But look at this. Is the 1.5 degree threshold far away? The answer is no. This particular report came on 18th May, you know. It says we will achieve it by 2027, it is bad for us. That means we have to take action yesterday, not even tomorrow. What are you going to do that if you don't even take out carbon dioxide from them? So that is what I am going to tell you. So look at this particular slide. <coughs> Just the beginning of the pandemic, the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration was 410 ppm. During the year, practically we had no economic activity. We know that we were hacked at home, but still we added two people. And now it is 424 people. So carbon dioxide concentration 
what they have predicted that annually it should not go beyond 2 ppm. But you have already achieved this. So we are in real danger. So we have to have technologies which will decarbonize the economy, take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and we should not be having carbon dioxide. You know. So otherwise, what will happen? By the year 20 to 50, it, temperature will grow to something like 8 to 10 degrees, and that will be the end of the world. That will be the end of the world. So we have to protect our future generations. So you see that. So all these things, what I reported here, everybody has talks about it, including the economists, including the planners, including the governments. Hydrogen technology, I say carbon dioxide is the new oil because I can convert carbon dioxide into a variety of chemicals and materials. Okay? Decarbonization, biomass valorization by 2054, we will not have any crude oil, what are we going to do it? What is going to happen to our refineries? We need a different feedstock. Okay, that is biomass based. Waste plastic recycling, again, this is related to plastic ban, which is a stupid idea, I'm telling you. Plastic should not be banned, and I, I will tell you, instead of that, we should encourage people to recycle plastic. We can use hydrogen to, you know, you know convert into monomers and other valuable chemicals. So it is upcycling, downcycling, recycling, plastic. Circular economy. And so recycle engineering will be another name of chemical engineers. When you don't have materials, you don't have energy, you have to recycle that. That's why. So this net zero sustainability, chemical engineering has a maximum role to play. So those guys, young guys, remember this what I said. You have a lot of role to play. And again, carbon negative energy systems, we have to develop them carbon negative, not carbon positive. Not even carbon neutral, which is net zero. Net zero is not a solution, I am telling you that. The entire Western world says 2050, China says 2060, India says 2070. It's a political decision. Right? So we have to look at this. So look at the decarbonization sector. People normally talk about transport. But many things like housing, forest, energy, agriculture, forest, land use, all these things require decarbonization. And we have to do that. And look at the carbon dioxide emissions. India is number four now in this. If you take the European Union individual nations, then India is number three. And that is how much is this? Is, this is the amount 2.622 gigatons, that is billion tons, is emitted by carbon dioxide from India. And so total is something like 36.4 gigatons. Unless we bring down this to 10 gigatons, 1.5 degree will be bridged. That means look, kind of technology which we have to develop in chemical engineers can do it very well, right? So we have to do that. So this is where, because ours is a carbon-based economy, we have landed ourselves in this problem. So you one hand you have fossil fuels, people talk about crude to chemicals, gas to liquid. Okay, on the other hand, we have this renewable resources, biomass, you convert chemically, biologically, you know, thermochemically, whatever, you can convert it into variety of, so we wrote a very interesting paper, this is 10,000 downloads, you know, when, since we wrote it. And so this talks about many policies across the country. So the use of carbon-based fuels, and this is where you want to take care of greenhouse gas emissions, chemical engineering will come to the rescue, all these processes very important. So we have refineries, the crude oil refinery, the CO2 goes out, that is greenhouse gas, another is biorefinery, that is carbon neutral. So we, what we say, we say plant many, many, many trees, so that nature takes care of it. But how many trees you can plant? In the year 2000, we introduced them, their life is over now, they are coming out. What are you going to be do that material? Millions of tons of this material. Otherwise, we require three years in the so-called linear economy. We need to have circular economy. <coughs> so what is the conversion of waste solids, whether it is biomass, debris, metals, materials, municipal solid waste, industrial waste, we can recycle them, value add to that, valorize. Conversion of liquid, water, solvent, industrial waste, water, seabed, etc. We can convert that. Similarly, gases, CO2, <coughs> methane, you know, hydrocarbons, carbon sulfide, CO, S, H2S, HCl, SO, and all of these things can be converted. And then believe me, very interestingly, hydrogen comes to our rescue. So I have said that hydrogen is going to be the savior of the world. And this is why I say because of these many things. 
So it's, it's all chemical engineering. What I'm telling you, the problems of the world, it's all chemical engineering. So don't sleep. This is very okay. <laughs> So you see, that, and so I remember, I joke, you know, but I say yes. The Trinity, as the Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh for me is solar energy, wind energy, and hydrogen energy. And I call hydrogen as the prime devil, the first deity. Why? Because hydrogen, wind and solar, except energy, it will not give anything. But hydrogen will give me everything because hydrogenation of biomass, plastics and whatnot. So I look at this particular, so by this, you know, initially we started with liquids and coal and nuclear, so solid to liquid, liquid to gas, in future it will be hydrogen is the only fuel because when we don't have natural gas, what are we going to do? Okay, that is another issue here. So, so you see the hydrogen demand, where Chemical engineers will work again. So there are many scenarios here. The International Energy Agency, Hydrogen Council and Transition Commission. See, they predict different things. Somebody said the demand in the net, uh, you know, energy, 73% will be renewable. In that sea, anywhere between 8.20.3 or 24 percent will be hydrogen. And the mixture will be both blue hydrogen and green hydrogen. Blue hydrogen means you have any source. Believe me, the hydrogen comes from the water. So if you're doing steam reforming of methane, for instance, or any coal for that matter, you, you have carbon dioxide in the coal product, you have to take care of it. If you, you know, sequester it, CCSU, then or you use it for something else, then it is blue hydrogen. If it is water splitting, even H2S splitting, there is no carbon, so that becomes green hydrogen. So that is what it is. So we can see that. So if there is a carbon dioxide, because we are worried of greenhouse gas, I can make many, many chemicals from carbon dioxide, and this is where hydrogen comes to rescue again. So what is my three stop? Water and air. Because when I talk about saying green ammonia. It is only nitrogen from air and hydrogen, green hydrogen. So we see we can make many, many chemicals from carbon dioxide. And same is the case with methanol. Methanol is a fantastic free stock for industry. Okay, methanol. So you carbon dioxide to methanol. We develop this technology in ICD. Right? We develop hydrogen technology and I've been claiming that I can produce hydrogen in less than a dollar provided I have 100 tons per day capacity. And we are running a plant now in Goa. Uh, and so similarly in the case with dimethylether. Dimethylether is an excellent substitute for you know diesel and LPG. And the same infrastructure can be used. I can mix you know DME into LPG. I can mix DME into hydrogen also. I can mix in anything else. And this, it is also free stock. So dimethylether. So very interestingly, life itself is controlled by transport and rate processing biochemical processes, chemical processes, life is not possible without the applications of chemical engineering principle. Of course, it started earlier, but now we understand. And so, human body is the best example of chemical engineering. Thought process itself is a chemical reaction, you know that. When you are angry, or when you are calm, these are chemical reactions. So we can understand that. So look at this. So, how to make chemical engineering attractive and exciting? One of the things is to having major and minor degree programs. So, you can have AI, MA, data science, blockchain in chemical engineering courses. I did it in ICD, I'm telling you. My Bhuneshwar campus has this. I did it because students are attracted, they can make use of it because it is a tool. It cannot substitute manufacturing, right? But it can be used to improve the efficiency of manufacturing. Okay, so that is that is it. So, so you see, now who is responsible for declining enrollment in chemical engineering? Number one is parents. Parents are responsible. Number two is media. Number three, image of the industry, the quality. Salary package, most important. If you are giving if you are giving 2 lakh rupees, nobody is going to come to you. You are giving 2 lakh rupees per annum. And then these guys are getting shopkeeper job, industry lapati. And marriage market, most important is marriage market. In the marriage, if you are a chemical engineer, I said joking you the other day, 
that you know, they, uh, you know I, I'm showing this slide here, okay? So, choose the group from several eligible bachelors, okay? So, parents influence, so I'll tell you why it is. So, suppose you choose a group from this, and, and you are waiting in the line, and the girls have to, girl has to choose the group, okay? They will never choose the chemical engineer. We are already married, we are lucky. <laughs> You know why? Because they think you are the most polluting fellows. Computer wala with high class job, fat salary, but his mobile phone doesn't work without the producer of chemical industry. Right? How many polymers are used? We require gallium arsenide, we require the silicon and whatnot. It is all job done, dirty job is done by us. But the girl, girls want to marry somebody else. What do you do? That is the perception. The perception is created by us. And the media also says, so chemical engineers must have a complete and quantitative understanding of both engineering and science. Because chemical engineering is highly science-based discipline. And this is the first discipline which was transnational. So like suppose I emit carbon dioxide near Pakistan border, it will go there also, right? It will not stop in our country because it is our pollution. No, that is what is happening. So studies of what we do, applied mathematics, material energy balance, thermal analysis, fluid mechanics, energy and mass transfer, separations, chemical reaction, kinetics, multiphase reactor design, procedure. These are the regular subjects which you study. And they will be there forever, but the applications are at different scale from atom to atmosphere. And to that, these are our foundations, right? Nobody can do research unless you have strong foundation in science subjects, okay? To that, you can add, you know, to AI and many data. So chemical engineering a discipline influencing numerous areas of technology, okay? Give me any processing industry, name any industry, we will have chemical engineering tools. So I will show you something. And the best chemical engineer is always at home. Mother is the best chemical engineer. Why? Because she knows how to do saving, chopping, extracting, same distillation, take pinching and whatnot. She will put one vessel on the top of another so that heat is not wasted. So mother is the best chemical engineer. Those mothers here clap pat your own back because I think you have been teaching this to your kids. Alright. So the bread. So you can see the functional materials also when we talk about all these materials is a chemical engineering principle. Only then the chemistry might change, right? The scale might change, but it is the same thing which we have been doing. All right. So and the beauty. So most of the time, people it's who mechanical, civil, electrical, they na? think we do only chemistry. You know, they are in the hallucination. They think chemical engineers means chemistry. Of course, we do chemistry because that is what is our bread and butter, but you don't understand chemistry, what do we do? So here it is, the beauty and charm of chemistry. So the attributes that perhaps most distinguishes chemistry from the rest of the sciences is the ability of chemists to control the structure of matter at the molecular level for complex natural products like vancomycin to nanoparticles in bone genes. That is true, but chemical engineers make it happen. Chemical engineers make it happen because they know the tricks of scale up and all. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, and chemical engineering is a multilingual, you know, entity. Chemical engineers talk many, many languages, right? So it can talk compatibly with the branches of science, engineering, technology, mathematics, medicine, and technology. Only discipline which can understand and talk something else. I know one uh, professor, uh, uh, you know, Rakesh. Uh, What's his last name? Uh, he, he, uh, Karnu was here, Agarwal, what, Rakesh, Rakesh Agarwal. No, Rakesh Agarwal is in Peru, there is another Rakesh, from Carnegie Mellon. He is now in Harvard, he is a professor in Paris. That is also chemical engineering. Okay, I am supposed to entertain him for 45 minutes, okay? So you can see that, so chemical engineering in pharma industry, and again reactor selectivity, <laughs> separator, vegetable deposition, etc. Chemical engineering in polymer industry, same principles we use. Go to chemical engineering in fertilizer industry, use the same thing, okay? Then dust up industry, then uh, in processing, food processing industry, 
Then the oils and fats and waxes industry. You look at the pigment industry. Okay, you look at the solar industry. You name it. Whatever you have now, wind energy, chemical engineering. Textile industry, chemical engineering. Minerals industry, hydro processing is all chemical engineers. Okay, mineral processing. Materials industry, coal industry. Okay. And you can talk about, you know, is this refinery industry the maximum? So many, many chemical engineers are very employed in refineries. So in other bio refinery now, we are talking about bio refinery. Then we are nuclear industry. The maximum number of chemical engineers were employed by Bhava Atomic Energy. Many, many chemical engineers. Okay. So you see that formulation industry. Majority of things are formulation, right? The drugs are, you know, paints and all those things. Or uh, biotechnology also. So, semiconductor industry. So, you know, very interestingly, very recently, the, uh, uh, you know, Taiwanese guys, what they did, they changed the name of their chemical engineering program to semiconductor. Nothing else is changed, right? Semiconductor, degree in semiconductor. But what they do is chemical engineering. So, you can see that. So same is in the automobile industry, okay? Then, so you look at the versatility of chemical engineering from primary industry to secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and ultimately it ends up at solids. Everywhere it is chemical engineering. Only thing you don't know it, right? Some of you pretend not to know it. So, so how do you bring respectability to chemical engineering. So you know who brought respectability to the chemical engineering? Bird Stewart Lightfoot. When they wrote that book, Only Mathematical, till that time, all other fellows thought chemical engineering means cooking something without understanding the science. But I mentioned to you chemical engineering highly science based discipline. So I already told you this. So so there are many challenges and many opportunities for chemical engineering and that is the clean processes, green processes, sustainable processes. Okay, so you can see that we have, so we have to expand and where are you going to expand? And I will tell you some of these examples. Uh, the all, you know, uh, nanotechnology or downstream chemical industry, whether it is bioprocessing or any maximum chemical engineering principles are used in downstream before it goes to the ATP economy. Okay, so new industry, miniaturization, West to wealth, circular economy, these are the new industries which chemical engineering will come to rescue. Then, what will be the profession 25 years down the line? Okay, we can predict many, many things, and biotechnology is one area which will not survive without chemical engineering. You have many types of biotechnological processes. So, if you want to predict the future, what will be the future of chemical engineering? In one word, it will be most exciting thing because you will understand things not only as a you know big scale but molecular scale and atomic scale. You will understand that you have very beautiful models now. So simulation. So like limited access to water will continue to have technology advancement in purification, desalination, and recycling capabilities. That is going to happen. Membranes will be very hot here because you want to reduce the energy intensity. New industries will be built on recycle engineering. Okay, recycle. Demand for lighter weight, more durable materials that are fully and easily recycled will increase and that is what I told you that, you know, uh, one of the important. Renewable civic infrastructure. Remember, we are building new buildings, old we are throwing. So what are you going to do with that material? You have to recycle it. So recycle engineering. So bridges, roads, electric gates, water systems and other chemical engineering. So I told you about, you know, solar energy, wind energy. So we can have the biopharmaceuticals cannot be done without chemical engineering. There is another way. So this is industry 1 to 4.0. Now people are talking about 4.5 and 5.0 also. So you see that this is all possible. So internet of things, big data and all this. This we have to use with reference to chemical engineering. Because these are tools. So we have huge quantity of data collected in the list. So we can see that all those things are there. So for example, this is a chemical factory plant. 
So we can we can see we can use AI here because we are working in this area and we are talking about you know green hydrogen and carbon dioxide to chemicals and whatever. So this is this is my research work in my laboratory. So anyway, so lignin-based chemicals you saw many papers were presented. Lignin is a very good source of chemicals and should not be burned as a fuel. So you can see how many things are possible when you take C5, C6 sugars, cellulose and whatnot. And so we will have many, many things because it will be word of sensors. And sensors require materials and who is going to make those materials? Whether it is biological, you know, chemical or whatever. So yes, we will have this. So green energy, okay, renewable energy. These are not just the terminologies, <coughs> but we will expand the limits of the existing carbon-based fuels also, okay? So you see, this is a, and I already told you that we have to bring down this carbon emissions to less than 10 gigatons. So transportation fuels to data analytics. Now we are migrating from one to another. So chemical engineering will always remain an exciting thing. So ladies and gentlemen, I know you are doing tutorial here and there. So I will go over the last few slides. Okay. So renewable energy, I told you. Sustainability, I told you. Alternative feedstocks, that is another area where chemical engineering will be very useful. New ways of energy generation, storage and transport, that is another area. Then processing of energy and natural resources including the radioactive materials. Energy engineering, design of inexpensive high energy density, quickly rechargeable storage batteries. Because somebody talked about batteries. Chemical engineering will come to rescue. Okay. And, and fuel cells, in fact, another area. Or digital technology, using digital technology you know, to improve margins. Even if 1% profit is increased, you make millions and billions of dollars. So ladies and gentlemen, so nuclear power enrichment. So I have made many slides because I was hoping that my idea of giving this lecture was to get excited and remain glued to chemical engineering. That was the idea. So, so you can see that new types of information genetics, okay. Pharma, uh, biopharma industry and chemical engineering will be very, very useful, okay. Gene editing and chemical engineering concepts, okay. Or deep learning and chemical engineering. I, I already told you about this and process intensification, okay. Process intensification chemical engineering, or nanotechnology in space, okay, or alternate production processes. We properties of an untreatable disease control and prediction. Chemical engineering will help in this. Chemical engineering will greatly help you, helpful in medical profession. So you can see biotechnology and, and also gene therapy. So we can do many, many things. So I'll go towards the end of my lecture, okay? Risk and hazard management, chemical engineering is required in this area particularly. And this is the chemical engineering folder too, where we will have convergence of digital, physical, chemical, and biological things. Okay, that is folder two. So we have, you know, this is deep learning algorithms and AI. This is a chemical plant. We can increase the profitability. This is a live example from one of the journal papers. So we can see that we can do many, many things in this. So genomic research, there is disappeared boundaries of biology and chemistry. And so biological engineering and chemical engineering. That is another form of this. Because cells obey the laws of chemistry. Okay? And ultimately, nature is our guide. Therefore, I said God is a chemical engineer, not to, but because we learn many things from nature, right? So, <coughs> so nature's chemical factories. You see how many things organisms like do. They are chemical factories, so we can learn from them. So, from structure to function, you know that is, we have to meet the biomedical, energy, and environmental needs of the people. Generation of semi synthetic enzymes, ion channels, DNA directed chemical synthesis.
synthesis, combined combination synthesis, construction of biohybrid thin films, enzymes in synthetic <coughs> organic synthesis, and generation of orthogonal enzyme immunity. So we can do many, many. See, this Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given to molecular machines, and that has to be converted into a practice. <coughs> So yes, so machine rendering accelerates catalytic transporting. So that is another thing. Machine learning and catalysis, another area. This Taki Gawa from Purdue University gave very brilliant presentation on that. So I'm going towards the end. So what are the grand challenges? The grand challenges is synthesis and manufacture of new substances by using compact synthetic schemes and processes with high selectivity. Now the word selectivity. With desired product with minimum energy consumption and benign environmental effect. That is what is required in chemical engineering. Should do that and we do it. Okay? Selectivity engineering, understanding and controlling the reactivity of molecules, so all molecular sizes and full range of molecular sizes. New substances, of course, chemical engineers will make it happen. You have to define these new substances. Chemistry of life, if we understand chemistry of life, we can overcome many diseases. We can find cures for them. Because it is the worst case in the So, untreatable diseases like you know, Parkinson and cancer and algema and whatnot, so to develop medicines based on the you know, mathematical models, that will get very, very helpful. And of course, green chemistry and engineering, everything where we would like to do this. Okay? So, predicting the future of chemical engineering is it the extension of today's courses? Answer is no. We have to have something else beyond that. So, that is. Chemical engineers, there will be a lot of innovation uh, they to develop solution for some of the today's most important problems like providing food, potable water, goods and energy to the population. All other things are followed up. There will be new industries. Consequences of previous and current waste generation will require new industries built around the reuse and recycle of existing landfill materials. Demand for lighter weight, more durable materials, that is going to happen. And so, finally, chemical engineers must aim to address the biggest problem facing the society. From atom to atmosphere, solving the mysteries of life, extending the life and making it bearable. It is not just extending the life. Chemical engineering is accommodating and expansive, connecting theory, simulation, experimental analysis, and predicting and promote openness, reproducibility, okay, yeah, you know, and other systems, okay. So, like chemistry has also become, you know, very interdisciplinary. Similarly, chemical engineering will be interdisciplinary, and so it will have the boundaries of science and engineering have already disappeared, it will happen so. So, chemical engineers' new role will be bringing new technologies to commercial function, technologies having origins in scientific discovery on atomic and molecular level. Chemical engineers work in molecular world and skill in integrating product design and process design, process control and optimization, and their skills are needed to develop genetic engineering. Okay? So, then only we will talk about this green economy, bioeconomy, circular economy, and whatnot. And so, interestingly, in our human body, biomaterials can replace many malfunctioning parts. 95% of our human body can be replaced by something else. Synthetic material, right? And in Bhagavad Gita, we say, Atma and Paramatma, there is a million. Soul goes to the Param, soul that is God. So that means trans going from one form to another form, body, right? So if you replace 95% of the human body by synthetic materials, biomaterials, you have already done it. They say na nainam chandanti vasthani nainam gharati pavata nacha kleda yantya apun na So, you know, nothing can dry, nothing can burn the atma. So that is what is going to happen because when we do it again. So final question now, is God a chemical engineer? Because I started with that. Everybody is laughing, but did I not say that? So yes, who said so? Okay, question to us, if you are awake, okay? God does. Wait. (laughs) 
Okay, thank you very much. You know, I might go down the street. Maybe the light is getting taken, but you must understand what we are doing in our profession. Thank you very much. Thank you.